when I would look at how uh, the process worked, I thought, you know, there's a lot of opportunity here to improve uh, and not necessarily do more volume, but to improve, you know, be more efficient the volume you're doing. And of course, the uh, outcome of that is that you do do more volume because as your as your lines and your queues are shorter, uh, then you draw more people in. You expose your service to a greater uh, number of folks, and they and the word of mouth, providing you're doing your job right, the word of mouth spreads and business grows. Welcome, everyone, to the Modern Car Wash Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Zelaznik, and today is the day Bill Martin comes onto the podcast. Uh, just years, years, and years of experience, uh, tons of knowledge. Heading into the interview, uh, what I kept hearing was Bill is the nicest guy out there, and he is an industry innovator, and I think you'll see that certainly or hear that uh, on this week's episode of the podcast. Bill certainly gracious with his time, gives us insight into the current landscape of the industry, where it's going, um, and, and really some great insight into if you're an operator, what you need to be doing to survive uh, in, in the current landscape uh, uh, that we live in today. Uh, a great 45 minutes coming up. I really hope you enjoy it. I certainly did. So let's get into it. Bill Martin, welcome to the Modern Car Wash podcast. It is a honor to have you on the show, sir. Well, thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Nice to be here. I appreciate the invitation. Uh, we were just catching up before the show, and um, announced to me you were actually in Albany uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, how was that trip for you? Yeah, we uh, uh, about once a year we try to do some market visits. More often, sometimes. It's, although in the past year it's been challenging, but we had an opportunity to travel to uh, multiple cities and visit some great car wash operations and some great folks. And we were in Albany and, and visited uh, the Innovated uh, factory and and some of the projects that uh, Shane and Tom are involved in and, and your team. Uh, so it was fun to be there. I'll, in fact, uh, I like to make a trip to Albany uh, as often as I'm able to because there's always something interesting going on there. And so we will be bringing our whole team, or not our whole team, but a number of our senior team back to Albany for a visit here in about a month. So looking forward to that, Kevin. Excellent. We had uh, Justin Alford from Benny's Car Wash on a, a couple weeks ago, and, and same thing. It was the timing of the podcast. Uh, we just had it wrong because he actually came through the building today, um, <laughs> and we could have had a sit down one on one in person. We could probably right. have done this uh, uh, either last month or, or the week to come. So we certainly look forward to uh, having you in here on per or in person. Um, for me, uh, I was in Boise seeing some of your facilities. Uh, I think it was in 2019, and uh, for I'm a I'm a fairly outdoors. I enjoy being outdoors, um, and that was one of the things that I really enjoyed about Boise was just the kind of that high desert. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, probably a place I don't necessarily know if I would have ever gotten to um, if it wasn't for the opportunity to come out to you guys and. Um, tour some facilities and for you to host us. So I, I certainly appreciate that. Um, I, I, I got to assume that you take full advantage of kind of the, the nature and the scenery around Boise. Right. Well, Boise is not on the way to anywhere. <laughs> you got to come here on purpose. <laughs> and uh, we want to keep we want to keep the uh, keep it sort of under wraps because uh, it's uh, the words out. Too many people are showing up, but it's a great, great community and uh, growing uh, like a lot of communities, and so we've benefited. Our business has benefited, and uh, we love it here. We've got uh, our, our families here, extended family, and yeah, it's a good part of the country to be in. We like it. And is it good is for Boise good for you, washing cars. Oh, is is Boise where you grew up? No, originally uh, I'm a Californian, and uh, uh, spent some time in the Midwest. Met my wife in the Midwest. She's from here. Uh, we ended up here, and uh, <clears throat> it was a it was a great choice. Been here 
moved here a long time ago and been here a long time. So, uh, and, and I know you've you've operated uh, a few car wash brands over the years. Um, can you just kind of, for those who don't know, uh, can you just walk us through kind of your history in the industry? Sure. Well, uh, like a lot of young people, I started out in the business. Uh, I was intrigued by it. Uh, and as I say, I started in California and there. Uh, car washing was a big deal uh, when I was getting into the business and uh, mostly full service and free with a fill up and that sort of thing. Anyway, I was intrigued by the nature of the business, by the production aspects. And as I looked at it, I thought, it just I seemed to connect with it because I felt like there was something I could offer that would improve the business and uh, be fulfilling uh, for me and my work. I didn't think of it in terms of a you know lifetime career. <laughs> Obviously, I don't think when you're in your 20s, you get that far ahead of yourself. But uh, at least I didn't. Uh, but as you know, as time gone, went by, of course, I uh, uh, got fully engrossed in the industry and and made it my lifetime career and uh, happy about that. So uh, sort of got into the equipment side of the business as an entree, uh, selling. And in this, I'd say that but during the day, I'd go out and try to sell equipment. At night, I'd help. I'd try to install it or, you know, did, made an effort to do that. Anyway, I didn't know much about it, but I, I learned. And, uh, uh, and then had an opportunity to get into the car wash business uh, uh, in the 70s, actually, going back to the 70s during the oil embargo. And uh, anyway, grew in the exterior end of the business first. It's so interesting because back then in the uh, mid-70s, we were doing free, or sorry, uh, exterior car washing with free vacuums. Uh, that comes, <laughs> you know, people talk about that new innovation. Well, we were, we were not, not just us. We weren't the first to ever do that, but we were doing that in the 70s, and uh, uh, so it's not a new idea, but, of course, it's been taken to a much higher level uh, than what we were doing. It was somewhat primitive, but still, it, it was uh, well well received. We also, I was also in the full service end of the business, uh, got into that when we came to Boise. Uh, been in the, we, we currently have full serve exterior lube, or let's call it flex serve. Uh, we have a lube. We're in the exterior business. We're not building any new flex serves. I don't think many people are. Uh, it's right. still a it's still a segment of the industry that the consumer uh, wants, and I think will continue to want and continue to uh, patronize. Uh, but because of the challenges of managing the labor component and the variability of demand, uh, it, people are are shying away from it. Uh, sure. And I think therein, by the way, lies an opportunity. I think if you uh, are up to that challenge of managing the aspects and, and, and trying to find tech, technological ways to do a better job uh, with, with, with a slower labor component, there's a huge opportunity in that flexor because uh, people are more affluent than ever. They drive nicer cars. They want to keep them nice. Uh, gosh, in a pandemic uh, world, uh, people want that car clean inside and out with uh, with uh, services like Uber and uh, you know ride services like that. Uh, if you're going to get into another person's vehicle, you want to make sure it's clean. And so I yeah. think that I think the demand for that kind of service is going to get not diminished, but get greater and there'll be fewer and fewer places for people to do it. So. Uh, anyway, I, uh, so we, we, well, we are in, like, oh, in all those. Well, segments. I'm sorry. I, sorry. I just to kind of like touch on that is, you know, you, you talk about the exterior with the vacuum free vacuum model and how that was an old idea kind of got pushed aside. Um, certainly like the touch free service was, uh, had its moment and kind of went away. You almost see the cycle in the industry that, who knows from now, 10 years from now, we might be saying the flex serve is the model of choice. Well, I know that there are some folks that are working on the uh, robotics. Uh, so finding ways to streamline and add more efficiency to vacuuming and window washing and that sort of thing. Uh, I think that's doable. It's probably a ways out and to hit the, uh, to make it affordable uh, is going to be challenging, but 
but again, I, I think the consumers are going to want that kind of service. Again, more they're more fluent, they can afford it. Um, and so uh, I think you're right. I think we could see a shift. But the challenge is a couple of things. One, it takes a bigger footprint, a bigger facility. It's more expensive to build. And then it's more expensive to manage and uh, with the labor components. So you got to fit all that. Although on this tour we took recently, we did visit a, a facility being built that's uh, where the owner is going to try to employ some robotics to achieve just what we talked about. So uh, I think the the thing is there, stay tuned, because uh, it's it's going to be uh, evolving. Yeah. It, um, I remember watching or listening to a conversation with Elon Musk and love him or hate him. Um, but one of the issues that he said that he, they had with Tesla was they tried to automate the entire process. And what they missed was, you know, a swinging hose, a robotic arm can't grab a swinging hose, or yet it can't. It's much more efficient for a human being to actually see the hose, be able to grab it. So certainly, like, um, uh, it's kind of no different. You're going to run into some issues automating, like, a, an interior clean process. But there's... I, who's not to say that 20 years from now, 10 years from now, five years from now, it, it, it can't be done. Um, I do want to, I, oh, go ahead. No, I, I just, I think you're right. And I think the technology is advancing. And of course, you know, uh, if you hit a tipping point where the affordability and the efficiency and the reliability of that equipment becomes uh, much more user-friendly, then I think there'll be broad adoption and we'll see that change occurring sure. rapidly. So maybe, I don't know, two minutes ago, I rudely interrupted you to ask you a question. So I do want to go uh, swing back a little bit and talk about uh, the start, your start into the, um, to the industry. And it sounded like you were drawn to the operation, the process of it. Um, was that what most uh, excites yeah. you or? You know, it really did. It kind of, I call it the production model. It kind of fascinated me as I watched it. And I and when I would look at, of course, I'm going back decades, but when I would look at how uh, the process worked, I thought, you know, there's a lot of opportunity here to improve uh, and not necessarily do more volume, but to improve, you know, be more efficient the volume you're doing. And, of course, the uh, outcome of that is that you do do more volume because, as your as your lines and your queues are shorter, uh, then you draw more people in. You expose your service to a greater uh, number of folks, and they and the word of mouth, providing you're doing your job right, the word of mouth spreads and the business grows. And we've seen it. I mean, everybody knows about what's happening with uh, memberships, and you know, there's uh, the numbers vary in the number of conveyors in the in the United States. Uh, I think the latest information I have is somewhere around 17,000 conveyors. Uh, that doesn't include NBA automatics and things of that nature. But uh, And so uh, that's of all types. Uh, and the average volume is pretty low. The average throughput in those average is pretty low. So the ones that uh, can really perform well and do a great job, there's a big opportunity to, to increase that. And even with the uh, what we've seen with consolidation, and I was involved Going back to some of the history, I was uh, my three car washes in Boise were the first three car washes that Mr. Car Wash ever owned. Uh, I was a founding partner, and uh, I was uh, you know involved with a team that put that together, and we we got off to uh, it was a different time uh, in the late '90s when that was happening, but uh, there was a lot of fear on the part of the traditional car washer that they were going to be overtaken by these consolidators that were going to just come in with all kinds of uh, uh, firepower and uh, uh, lots of money to grow. And well, it didn't happen. Uh, in fact, a lot of them failed. Uh, uh, and even today with that number of consolidators, let's call them or private equity, how you ever you want to look at it, or uh, brands that are growing, there's still a very small part of, of this 17,000 uh, car washes. Right. And so and what we've seen is, well, there's some good examples. And I think Mr. is one of the best of running a large chain and doing it well. Uh, and I have a lot of respect for what they do. And it has nothing to do with what I was doing at the beginning because it's a whole different company today, and they're doing a great job. But uh, but then you, when you list all the different 
or look at all the different uh, companies like that, um, they there's a lot of opportunity for those companies to improve. And so if you're competing with one of those big guys and they just want to get scale and grow as big as they can, and I think a, a lot of things get fall between the cracks in that process of uh, customer service, throughput management, quality, uh, attention to detail. And so uh, it's just sort of about getting scale. And, and when this, let's call it Wall Street money comes in, uh, when that comes in the front door, innovation goes out the back door. That's been my experience. So okay. uh, there's still opportunity for the small operator or a company like Innovate or Hoffman, whatever, to, uh, in our company, we think, to innovate and to grow and to beat the big guys. And it's always not, 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 not always about the, who's got the deepest pockets, but who, who can manage the business the best. So, uh, sure. so it, it, as I look at that history and what, what happened to us, we, we uh, got intrigued by uh, partnering with, it was called Car Wash Partners at the time, which is now Mr. Car Wash. But what my interest was, was not selling my business. That was part of what happened. It was, I really considered it a merger, but what we were doing what I saw is the opportunity to scale a business uh, and make it a national business uh, that had a, a national brand and uh, would 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 grow confidence in the consumer. Back in the 90s, you know, we really had a problem with consumer confidence with car washes. You know, uh, what's going to happen to my car? Is it going to be damaged or something? And so uh, we had a big op- we had an opportunity to improve that. And I thought a national brand is one way we could do that. Uh, like a let's call it a Jiffy Lube, for instance, in the in the lube business that has this national brand that builds confidence. So that's what I saw, and uh, I don't think that's happened yet. <laughs> it hasn't been able to. No one scaled it to that uh, that level. Uh, some of the big guys are getting close, but um, anyway. So uh, we started that process with uh, Mr. Car Wash, and I was on board with that for a few years, and. In uh, 2000, whenever the uh, equity markets, let's call it, dried up, so to speak, cash dried up, uh, it looked like things were not going to proceed as planned. And so I chose to go a different direction. And uh, But my experience with that company was all positive. They're great folks and they have, I think, a great future. And they have, you know, what's interesting is uh, when that whole experiment started, uh, they had money, but they didn't have any operational skills. And as they acquired chains and uh, uh, get, got some pretty good ones along the way, uh, they they also acquired a lot of great talent. And that talent's sure. still with them today. And so uh, it's really benefited the company. But anyway, that's that's enough about them. But um, so we, uh, uh, you know, when I left that company, we started uh, Metro and uh, – we grew it. Uh, we just had three stores in Boise, and then we uh, uh, also have built in Colorado. I don't know if you visited that store, but we have a double tunnel in, in Denver area right. uh, that we built. And uh, uh, and then we're our company Metro is growing. We'll we'll uh, have ten stores open uh, by the end of this year, and so we're uh, we're on a growth pattern again. And I'm. I'm at a point in my career where people say, you know, why, why are, why are you doing that? Well, it's really my, my family that's doing it. They love the business. I'm blessed that all three of my kids, uh, not by my urging, but they chose to get in the car wash business, uh, yeah. at some point after doing other things. And so, uh, we have the opportunity now, our family does to, to grow that just similar, not unlike the Hoffman family, uh, that right. also is very committed in growing that company. Right. Um, a lot to unpack there and a um, kind of going back to the cycles, um, the uh, looking at the private equity and what was happening. I mean, I think you're seeing the same thing now and I think you're, I think it's very true. It's a good point that um, how do you grow or how do you scale on a national level and maintain that quality and that service? You know, it's not, uh, it's not like you're opening up a McDonald's and nothing against McDonald's. Don't get me wrong, but um, you're actually, people are trusting you with, their, I don't know, thirty, forty thousand dollar investment um, to clean and take care of, and um, at the end of the day, and hopefully the the operators like Metro, like Hoffman Car Wash, who really are 
uh, understand the importance of the detail and uh, understand the importance of having the right people in place will prevail because they understand or they know the 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 importance of quality and customer service. Um, the regarding Metro and and starting Metro, one of the things that we're going through, we're we're also going through a, a phase of growth, and um, you know I think we're going to open maybe five stores in the next. It changes every week. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe five stores in the next. Uh, two years and then and then above, but we're looking. We're we're mainly based in New York and upstate New York and the capital region, but also South and Binghamton. But we're looking at expanding out of state, and that's something that you have obviously experience with. Uh, Colorado, you're opening a, a location, uh, I think, very soon in, in Washington. Right. How do you do it? How do you? I mean, it's not you're, it's not a short <clears throat> drive. No. Um, no, it's not. <clears throat> well, uh, it's an interesting <laughs> question. And I, I want to go back to Tom Hoffman Sr., who probably, this goes back over 20 years ago, when Tom Sr. said to me, you know, with computers and with cameras and with technology today, this is again back in the 90s, why can't you have car washes? Why can't you run these car washes remotely and, lar- and you know and uh, be able to do that successfully? We had that conversation, and we agree that it is possible. I mean, it's possible to be able to watch it and to be able to look at the numbers. Of course, managing the actual day-to-day operations is a little different story. But to answer your question, how we do it, we have well, I have my my kids involved uh, in in uh, Montana. We're in Montana. Idaho, Washington, and we built a, a metro in Colorado. Uh, so we have, and I have uh, operating partners that we we you know that are there to, to manage the business and have a vested interest in the outcome and the success of the business. Uh, you know, you said something, and I think it's important that, to understand that I think we're at an inflection point in our industry where. Operators like Hoffman or Metro or or whoever it might be that has let's call it three to thirty car washes, um, we're facing potential competition from some of these big guys, and we can talk about again how efficient or effective they are. But they do have, and, and the money that's been coming to our industry, the uh, what we call it Wall Street money or whatever, has gotten the numbers have gotten uh, just I mean. A nosebleed level. I mean, uh, the, a recent transaction. Went down. Sorry about that. A recent okay. transaction went down uh, uh, that was nearly a billion dollars, and so for car washes. And so when you hear that, it's uh, it takes your breath away. And so, what does that mean for Hoffman Car Wash or Metro Car Wash or you know? Uh, Joe and Mary's car wash. I think that we have to be diligent and pay attention because uh, they are going to come in on top of us and we're going to have to perform, not only perform at a higher level, but if you have, let's say you have three locations in a, in a market and uh, one of these big guys comes in and they decide they want to build 10, uh, now they can get, they can scale that and get market, market penetration uh, and do uh, a pretty decent job and if they take you know if they take your profitability from x down to y uh, that could significantly impact the value of that enterprise and not just temporarily but long term so i think that uh, what we're going to see going forward is decisions operators are going to have to decide are they committed to growing? Because if you just if you're just going to run those, let's call it three stores or five or whatever it is, uh, there's a good chance you could get overrun. And so uh, they have to they have to decide: Are you going to be committed? Are you going to grow? Are you going to reinvest in the business? Are you going to add technology, or are you going to sit back and just uh, try to have a lifestyle based on what you're doing? And and that could work for a while, but I don't think I think long term it's uh, there's a threat. And uh, so. Yeah, I think that's a a very good point. I mean, if you're if you're going to stay still, I mean, chances are eventually and the way it's going that some of these national brands or regional brands or whatever will take over. How long has that been in your mind then? I mean, obviously, you just said you're 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 expanding. 
Um, is it, is this always been your philosophy or is this something that you've picked up in the last? No, couple I years? think, I think this is a, I, as I said, I think we've reached an inflection point and I think it's happened. I mean, we could go back, I don't know, let's call it to 2019 or 18, somewhere in there, whenever. And I think that COVID interestingly enough, changed the dynamic because we all know that the car wash industry did pretty well in the COVID year. It's, it's no yep. secret now. And uh, the this smart money, let's call it, uh, uh, has watched that as well. And as they look at places to get a return on investment and they look at retail or different, you know, manuf- whatever it might be, and they see how well we came, our industry came through that. Uh, it has really uh, caught fire with with that segment of investors, and uh, again, I'm not <laughs> I'm not testing anything here that's it's pretty widely known. Uh, I'm a partner in a company called Amplify out of Phoenix, and Amplify uh, uh, helps companies that are wanting to either raise money to grow or or maybe take on a minority partner or maybe do a cash and carry deal and, and sell out and walk away. And they, there are about 25 or 26 qualified, highly qualified buyers, uh, uh, companies looking at the car wash industry with uh, literally billions of dollars to throw at it. So, uh, so that's I don't Metro. I don't particularly worry about that because I think we want we need to focus on what our core strengths are, and focus on our our core values as a company and build around that. Just as Kaufman or crew car wash or other companies that we know of are doing the same thing. And I think we'll win in that scenario. But if what, what I'm saying is that if you stand still, if you're not willing to make that investment, if you're not willing to push forward, then you should really evaluate where you're going to be, where you're at today, where you're going to be in three to five years, because uh, you probably need to be looking over your shoulder. I think that uh, change is coming. I think we will, we have reached that inflection point, uh, and we're seeing we're seeing that change every day. Um, and you know, uh, a lot of people in the business say, "Well, I can I can win against those guys because I can run a better operation." And there's some truth to that. However, uh, uh, when they when they can scale a company from, again, my my example where you have three stores or five stores. And these big guys come in and they want to put 20 in. Uh, that's a tough, a tough battle to win. So uh, I think that's where our industry is struggling right now, trying to decide which one of the who am I? Am I going to just keep doing it? Am I going to, and, you know, and by the way, you just mentioned that Hoffman wants to add five stores in the next couple of years. I can tell you that five years ago, if somebody said that, they, you know, people's eyes would glaze over <laughs> and say, there's no way. Because nobody yeah. was doing that. Nobody was doing that. I mean, if you add a store every couple of years or every year, that was pretty aggressive. Some of the best companies in our industry, now I'm talking about organic growth. If you acquire, that's a little different story. But to do organic growth, uh, it's pretty hard to do. And yet today, there are numerous companies that are growing at and, and doing much more than what you just said. So sure. it's happening. And uh, uh you can sit and watch it, or you can be act proactive and and uh, uh, execute on your plan. And uh, I think if you do that, again, I think good operators are going to always win. But uh, we sh- we shouldn't be naive to say these big guys are, you know, there is a flash in the pan because it's truly really not. Sure, uh, I do want to shift a little bit and talk about uh, yeah. uh, your family and and maybe get into Metro a little bit more. Sure. Um, you have all, you have all three of your children, uh, in the, in the business. Right. Uh, so our oldest child is my daughter, Micah, and she's our, uh, HR specialist. And I guess, uh, even beyond that, she kind of helps keep the trains running on time. She, she, uh, she keeps <laughs> us all in line and, uh, uh, she's a huge value to our company. Uh, my, uh, uh, middle child uh, Andrew is up in Montana, and Andrew is an avid outdoorsman, and he loves being in Montana. But he also loves washing cars and building car washes. So uh, he he was in the military, and uh, after got out of the worked in the car, all of them worked in the car washes when they were young. But they all did something else later. And after he graduated, he got a degree in physics, uh, and uh, 
I don't know why he did that because, uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of useless to him. But anyway, I guess I said, why are you getting a degree in physics? He said, well, it's fun. I like it. I said, oh, really? <laughs> anyway, uh, so he, he went in the military and then uh, after he got out of the military, uh, did some other things and then decided he wanted to get back to the car wash business. Then uh, my, our youngest son, Derek, is our chief operating officer. Actually, he'd been in the business longer than the other two. He, uh, he from almost from, he, he did some other things for a while, but, you know, uh, in his mid-20s, he decided he wanted to be back in the car wash business. So they're all three in it. They all three contribute a different piece to the, to the business. Uh, and uh, we have been in the process of transferring ownership of the company to to the kids and so uh, they will be going forward with the growth uh, a year ago we had four locations at the end of this year we'll have 10 uh, some organic and some acquisition and uh, we have a, a goal to grow pretty aggressively uh, in the markets we're in uh, and we don't uh, uh, we don't think that, that we think that that's doable and uh, manageable uh, on many different scales, you know, financially and operationally. We are, the secret uh, in, in all of this, of course, is having the right team. And that's one thing I admire about the Hoffman Innovative Group is they've got a great team. And I've, I've seen it over the years. And, and we've tried to emulate that with our company. And what I tell our folks is you've got to staff for growth. And you can't wait till you need them necessarily to go hire them. You've got to be a little ahead of that curve or you won't be cut. You'll be playing catch up. Uh, it's it's a little bit of a challenge to do that because you've got to make the financial commitment to bring talent sure. on board. But uh, once you have that, then it's incumbent on the leadership to make sure you can backfill and grow that company to to uh, meet the challenge. And um, so that's what we're doing. And uh, yeah. at Metro, and uh, we love our brand. We love our uh, concept. We uh, we do. We are proud that we do some innovation. You know, we we started a company uh, called No Pileups uh, here in Boise, and uh, uh, it was a concept that we had a long time ago, really. And uh, I don't take the credit for that. It was uh, my nephew Pete Ness who really uh, figured out how to do it, and uh, I think that's been a game changer for a lot of operations around the country. Sure. It, it's uh, it's helped us do more wash more cars and uh, more safely. Um, and so we're always looking and there's, and one thing about our business, I think there's a whole host of things that could be innovated, whether it's in the operation side and the, in the HR side and the marketing side, there's a whole host of things. So we, we think we're just like <laughs> at the beginning of some of this opportunity. Well, it seems like your the philosophy, uh, that you carry into your business is that innovation. Um, you know, what's next, what's next. And you mentioned it. If you're able to staff up and make the investment on people, that's only going to spur more innovation because it's new ideas, it's different perspectives. Um, so three children in the business, your nephew develops no pileups. What's Christmas dinner <laughs> conversation? Do you, are you guys able to shut it off or is this, uh, is this what we what really. you talk about? Well, I mean, we have, we, you know, we have lots of family stuff we talk about, but it's not off limits. It's not off limits to talk about business. Yeah. And, uh, 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 we, we, uh, uh, we take family vacations and we, you know, we, we certainly are able to disconnect and uh, I feel blessed that our families, you know, uh, all, we all get along it's, so far, at least it's all good. And, uh, yeah. I think, uh, again, the Hoffman family, good example of, uh, uh, everybody pulling together and, uh, uh, and that's, we, we feel fortunate that way. I mean, our industry is very much a family business. It's a mom, you know, the term mom and pop business. Uh, it's grown to a, a very high level, but it's still uh, some of the biggest chains uh, in our, that are privately held are all family businesses. And, uh, yeah. uh, and so we're, we're fortunate. You know, what's interesting about our industry I was telling someone I could probably travel. Of course, I've been at this for a long time, but I could probably travel across the country and stay in someone's home in every state in the country uh, because I, yeah. I've been fortunate to, to meet a lot of people. But it's not just meet a lot of people. They're great people. They're wonderful people. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm sure other industries maybe have can share some of that, too. But uh, my experience is that uh, car washers are gracious. They're giving. They're uh, welcoming. Uh, they're, they're happy to share. 
as long as you're not across the street or down the street, they're happy to share ideas. And uh, that's really uh, largely in part of uh, responsible for our success is that we have, I tell people I've never had an original idea in my life, but I've stolen lots of them. So, uh, <laughs> or bar, borrowed them maybe is a better term, but uh, yeah. So, uh, and I think that's part of the reason I, I keep getting drawn back. I've sold out a couple of times and retired <laughs> and <Yeah>. that lasted, <laughs> that lasted weeks or months and uh, got back into business. And so uh, I'm drawn to it, not, not just for the, you know, benefits that it brings in the business, but also uh, the, the personal rewards of the people. Somebody said, "If what would what would you do if you won a lottery?" I think I'd just go build more car washes. <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, it's, it's it's fun to see uh, young people. We've had, I think, other companies too. We've had experience where young people come to work for us. They fall in love with the industry, and we've had a few of them that now own car washes. Not very many, but there's a couple that have gone on to have their own car washes. So it's pretty cool when that happens. Well, it's it's nice because, I mean, certainly you're, you're doing what you love. It probably, uh, you know, the old saying, you, you probably don't work a day in your life uh, doing what you love. Right. Um, and I think I think you're right. It, from my experience, and I've only been in the industry uh, almost five years now, but every – operator owner that i've met is so gracious um i think you're a prime example of this the fact that it took you know a couple emails to to have you booked and now we're talking one-on-one -on -one. um there was no kind of uh arm twisting to get you on the show and i, I certainly appreciate that um the, well at my age um, if somebody wants to talk to you you want to listen that's <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's clear uh when 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 I was in Boise, uh, I guess two years ago, uh, one of the things that really and I'm a marketer, um, I really appreciate design. One of the things that I loved about Metro were uh, just the brand that the logo has that kind of Art Deco feel to it. The neon lights. Uh, can you just talk about what went behind those decisions, or where you yeah. where you were inspired? Yeah. I wish I could take the credit, uh, but uh, it was really our sign company, Golden West Advertising, that came up with that, and uh, and they they've won several awards, not just with our stuff, but uh, with some of the designs they did around our logo. They've won a number of awards just recently, another one uh, for design. But they came up with that, and once I saw it, it just uh, really spoke to me, and um, and it's fun when you get a brand. Well, here's a kind of a funny story. We sold our business in Boise, and we were Metro was out of the out of the business for about three years, and we were still winning the best in Boise <laughs> award, and we didn't exist; it was gone. Yeah. But for the consumer, we our team had done such a great job of branding, uh, and and consumers are you know they don't pay a whole lot of attention. I mean, I think. So we built these metros. They were coming to the metros, and then they changed. They became misters. But uh, whenever the surveys went out, Metro won the best, uh, Boise. And I, I, I don't. That's I'm not saying that to brag about Metro, but just to point out how branding, how valuable branding is and can be for a company if you if you're thoughtful about it. You know, people think of advertising. Well, I want to give a discount. I want to get people in with you know half off, and that's all fine and good, but. What really builds loyalty is that brand that they trust in. It goes back to what I said earlier about a national brand that builds confidence in the consumer and they want to come there. Uh, that's what we worked on with Metro. We want, we really want to, and we want our team to feel like they're part of this great company, but that's all branding. And so I, I yeah. appreciate what you're saying about that. And I think, I think it does work and they're, you know, uh, everybody's trying to beat the other guy with that, but it starts with having a good image and then really, investing in that and making sure that sure. everything you do should be what we say is to our team everything we do is really marketing whether it's uh, how we stand on the property how we dress how we uh, greet the customer all that is marketing everything really is, what it feels like going through the tunnel i mean it all has to come back to what's the message you're sending to that consumer a to do a great job but also for the experience that they're going to have and, and that uh, feel good feeling to make them come back yeah i, I again uh, kudos to you and e even the properties um 
I'm sure the the location that we visited in um, uh, Meridian. Uh, I forget the, Meridian. Yes, yeah. massive facility. You have the express loop there as well. Uh, it's impressive. It's not a you know it's it's uh, multiple stories or it appears to be multiple uh, stories. Uh, it's a it's a large facility and. Um, I think the, well, kind of going back to what you were saying about marketing is, you know, people's thought is, all right, we'll send out a discount or we'll, we'll price. Pricing is a small part of marketing, right? If pricing was the only thing that mattered, everyone would be driving, I don't know, Kias or Toyotas yeah. or whatever it is. Right. It's, it's really about building that brand and, and making, just having that good, I don't know, feel good feeling when you're driving through a car wash or, um, right. Uh, so we tell our, we uh, tell our team that price is more in the mind of the seller than the buyer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. we, as, as sellers, we think about the price all the time. Are we too high? Are we too low? Or the consumers wants a product and okay, it's, you know, they, they're not going around and well, the guy down the street is 50 cents less. That's, that's silliness. And so you, yeah, you, you don't want to, you can't charge $50 for a car wash. So it's got to be within reason, but right. Uh, it should not be dictated by, uh, by, you know, just trying to generate all this volume. Uh, if you've got a low price, you have to do a lot of cars. I'd rather have a high sure. price and do a lot of cars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, how your, your location in Spokane is, is it near completion? We're about 30 days out or less. We're breaking ground on Monday on another one. And so that'll give us. And I think we'll close on an acquisition, so we'll have uh, what uh, four up there, uh, four or five in that market. We we think we can increase that market pretty significantly. Uh, a lot of um, things we're working on there. So, um, and then we're in Montana again. Uh, Montana market is we, we we like it. My son's up there, and so yeah, we're we're looking at uh, continuing to step on the gas. Well, what's interesting is uh, you're stepping on the gas. We're con we're stepping on the gas, and and this is during a time when you know supply chain and everything's a bit of a mess. Um, the price of a two by four is eight dollars, but still there's there's the value there, or there's the opportunity that everyone kind of sees, like you said, to to you know uh, step on the gas, uh, pedal to the metal, I guess. Yeah. Um, what uh, um, uh, what do you think the rest of the year looks like for, for you guys? Well, uh, it's interesting. I think uh, if you listen to the talking heads and uh, read the paper, uh, you know, there's some not total agreement. But with all the stimulus money that's coming from D.C. and, mm -hmm. and all the pent up demand, we expect uh, the economy to grow and, and there'll be there'll be some pressure on inflation and prices. But uh uh, I think that we're going to we're going to it's we're going to see the next 18 to 24 months, I think, is going to be pretty, uh, pretty straight up. <laughs> and uh, uh, so fasten your seatbelt, because I think it's going to be a pretty good, uh, pretty good period of time. But I do think, again, you got to be prepared and uh, uh, think strategically about your business and, and uh, not just grow to grow, but, you know, make sure you're going to the right spot with the right product uh so you know i really i love uh the hoffman brand and what what you folks are doing and one of the things i learned from tom senior uh that i really it became part of what we do we get a, you know you talked about our facility the flowers and the color <laughs> i really i really learned that from tom senior uh i i never that I, that was a blind spot for me i never thought about it and he he's a uh, evangelist, you know, when it comes to that sort of thing about uh, the flowers, especially, and and uh, uh, he he got through to me, and we 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 really really work on that at our sites, trying to be, and we've won awards for that. Uh, but I give the credit to Tom Senior for for instilling that that uh, concept. And again, what what we say to to people is when somebody's driving past our site at 35 miles an hour. I'd like them to turn their head and say, look at that place. It looks kind of, it doesn't look like every other joint down the street that's surrounded by concrete and asphalt. It's really kind of cool looking. I want to yeah. go and see what's going on in there. And so it's part of a way, it's it's your sign in, in a way that draws them in. And uh, nobody does it better than Hoffman, but we, 
we we try to emulate that in our company. So for our so. audience who who might not know, is uh, uh, Tom Senior uh, one of the founders of our company? Green Thumb. All of our locations have uh, remarkable just landscaping, the flower arrangements, everything. Uh, we right. actually have our own greenhouse. We have our own landscaping <laughs> team. Uh, it, it's it's fun. I mean, you go to some of our newer locations and um, the the landscaping kind of just uh, it's over the I, top. I don't want to be too hyperbolic, but it's over the top. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, it really is, and if you you certainly appreciate it. So, and I can tell um, you when you go when you go to a city to request and seek a permit uh, to build a car wash, you've already got a few strikes against you when you say car wash because they have an right. image in their their mind about what you mean. And when you can demonstrate and show to them, this is who we are. This is what our places look like, or maybe they've driven by them or been to them. It just it drops the it drops the uh, barriers to entry i think significantly sure. so so it's uh, just it's part of being a good neighbor and you know one of the things yep, tom absolutely. told me is when he started doing this he noticed that other businesses around him would start doing the same thing and pretty soon the whole streets uh got this uh beautiful landscaping so uh i think that does you know there's something there it, for the your um your new locations uh they in the next couple of years, anything, uh, any tricks up your sleeve or anything that you'd be willing to, uh, uh, share with us? Well, I don't, I don't like to talk about anything we're doing until we do it. Cause it, you know, it might not happen. So I don't, I don't think I have any, any, uh, big revelations. We, we, uh, and there's always a big cost to doing technology because there's, you know, the whole failure and re, you know, so we, I just think it behooves everybody in this business to listen to new ideas, going to the shows and picking up. And you, sometimes you see something and say, that is a crazy idea. But, you know, you, you need to dig a little deeper and, and explore it. So uh, I think our industry, like I said earlier, there's just so much innovation that could change it and improve it. And uh, so uh, I'd say stay tuned. We, we got a few tricks up our sleeve, but uh, <laughs> let's make sure they work first. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you just mentioned shows. Um, uh, can we expect to see you at the Southwest ICA? Yeah, I'll definitely be at the, we'll definitely be at the Southwest with our team. I, I think there's a lot of pent up demand. We're members of Southwest, and uh, uh, we we've uh, I think that's going to be mobbed down there. Uh, and then in November, the ICA, same thing. There is just so much because of the growth and the new activity and the new people coming in. The opportunity to gather, uh, and there's always the usual stuff to just meet and greet. But I think that yeah, there'll be a lot of interest, and yes, we'll be there. Will you be there? Will you folks be there? Uh, we will. I will not be. Um, yeah. We actually have a sep separate, uh, I guess, marketing person for Innovate It, uh, and he'll be attending. I Great. will. I may be at the Northeast show, um, yeah. but we'll s stay tuned to that. But I think yeah. th it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, and just the people, the industry. And I think people are just excited to see one another. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's going to be great to see the technology and what the vendors have. But I think just to go have a drink or share a steak or whatever it is, I think that's – it seems like that's what uh, people are looking forward to the most. So in all the years I've been doing this, I think right now – I alluded to it earlier. Right now we're in a pretty heady times. I mean I don't think I've seen anything quite like it. And so it's uh, – a uh, and things are happening quickly. So I think that networking at these conventions is, is helpful to understand, you know, see what the big picture is. So, yeah. Yeah. It's well, good. Bill, that, that's all the time I have for you. And I, I know you're certainly a busy man and I don't want to keep you too much longer. I really, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I, I learned, I think it's been 45 minutes or just over 45 minutes. I learned a ton. Uh, I hope our audience did too. And I, I can't thank you enough. Well, happy to do it. I wish you all the best, and uh, I'll plan to see you when I'm there, maybe in about a month, hopefully. Absolutely. All right. Good. Thanks so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. All right. That's a wrap on this episode of the Modern Car Wash Podcast. Thanks so much for listening, and a big thank you to Bill Martin for taking the time to talk to us today. Uh, I am certainly a smarter individual coming out of that conversation than I was going into it. Uh, so, again, a big thanks to Bill. Uh, be sure to follow along on this podcast through the innovatecarwash.com 
uh, website, on our YouTube channel, and of course, anywhere that you get your podcast. Until next time, stay safe and stay tuned.